So folks, how would you feel if you were caring for two very active dogs in the wintertime in a rural area in Maine and you had two horses clean their hooves and clean out their pens? Penny from Deer Isle does these things. Here's what she has to say about the animals she cares for. Actually, this guy, this was my rescue boy, and he was in a crate, I was told, for about seven months. And he's still pretty neurotic. But, and he was not my chosen one. Um, I, he came up for adoption and Packard was alone and they're pack animals and I thought, well, let's try it. And Packard still has my heart in a special way. But he's a little bit elusive. But this boy, wherever I am, he comes up and he curls up and he puts his little head on me. And at night he starts out this crate and then he's up in my bed. I have a single bed. When I wake up, there are three of us in there. It's such devotion, and in a way I don't get from Packard, even though Packard is my darling. So you're his special one? I, I think so. Hmm. Except um, he came to me food aggressive, and ever since then... He being Sol Solomon, 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 you mean? Mm -hmm. Solomon. Solomon is the black yeah. uh, Italian. Had, yeah. There was a, a large dog, and he probably had to fight for his food. But um, he, I feed him in one corner. Pa Packard, stop it. Um, and Packard just around the corner, still a little pantry, they're, they're close to each other, but they can't look to each other in the face because he would growl. There are other ways to do it, and I probably should have done it so they could eat side by side, but we still do that. Well, I want them to feel safe and loved, but I also want them to feel like they've had a life and done some things, you know, just like all of us. And to forgive me where I've gone wrong. <laughs> Penny, you have horses too, and how has having the, the two dogs and the horses changed your life? A lot, a lot. After my children left, and my old horse died, my old cat died, and then I was free. <laughs> and you know, of course, that's a sorrow, but I was free, and I started traveling, going to Mexico every summer. I was still teaching, and that was part of my studies, and I loved it. And I thought, wow, this is really great. And then I had a little house built on a piece of land my mother gave me down on the shore, and I got thinking, well, maybe just a little donkey, a little miniature donkey might be okay. And I went to look at a miniature donkey advertised, and he came out of the barn, <laughs> big hulking thing, yanking yanking the groom along behind him, and I thought, uh-uh. Except it was a miniature horse farm, and I saw this little runt of a mini, and oh, she just broke my heart immediately. Why did she break well, your heart? Well, there was something so pathetic about her, but beautifully so. She was a little strange looking. Her eyes were, well, come to find out. Later on, well, she died before she was two years old, but I got her. And I remember the day, I couldn't pick her up right away. I was still teaching. She was still, she wasn't weaned yet. And um, so I had to wait a couple of months. And um, she was just so shaggy and these bulgy eyes and sweetest little face. And um, I remember that day I paid for her. And my sister and I stopped at a Chinese restaurant. This was way up in inner, inner Maine. And it was maybe the happiest day of my life. Now, I have my children and all these other wonderful days, but that day I was so happy, and I'd taken pictures, went to a restaurant, and I was showing the pictures of her to everybody, and then finally she came, but before she did, I thought, oh, herd animals, uh, maybe I better go get her little best friend as well. And that's why I still have my Chipotle, the black mm -hmm. one. And just like with Solomon and Packard, Packard, visuals have always been important to me, and I'm an art teacher, and that might be part of it. And I picked out Packard partially for his looks. And I picked out my little baby Minnie for her looks. And I loved them so much. And it was a totally different thing with my rescues. Um, like Solomon, I didn't have that immediate attachment. And I didn't like his looks as much. I think he's beautiful. But, you know, it was a different thing. And it really taught me something because the devotion of little Solomon who was not my favorite initially, 
And he's not really my favorite now. I can't really divide it because it's a different feeling. But um, with my little mini, I have a wonderful story there. Well, I had the two of them and I raised them. I lost her before she was two years old. Oh, what was her name? Did you say Clementine? Clementine. Mm -hmm. Clementine. And oh, I grieved so. It was terrible. I couldn't go to school. I had to take time off. It was awful. And then I started, I thought, what am I going to do with the other one? Am I going to find a home for Chipotle or do I get another one to keep Chipotle company? And it took months. My sister and I went around looking at miniature horses around the state. And finally I got a call from the breeder where Clementine had come from. And she had a little baby half-sister just born. And I went up and I saw that and I was down on my knees with my arm around her neck. It just, you know, it was love at first sight. And I brought her home and she was wonderful. But she was not. I had trouble with her too. And then an equine dentist came to do her teeth. And he said, she's a dwarf, you know. And I'd read about dwarfism in mini horses, which happens because of too much interbreeding, which happens in the miniature horse mm -hmm. field. And unfortunately now, the dwarfs, because they're a curiosity, have become kind of popular and people are on waiting lists for them, which is a shame. But I, I, ha I didn't even know about dwarfism when I got my mine. But he told me that and I thought, oh, well, maybe that's why I lost Clementine so early. And then Adobe died when she was about 10, much too early. And um, some of the characteristics, they had kind of the big eyes. And, and their backs weren't little dish backs. They were kind of straight. Although in the winter, when I found both of them, they had hair this long. You couldn't tell. You welcomed in another horse penny. I did. It was years ago. Actually, my daughter found it. Very, very thin, thin horse. Turned out to be a lovely little girl. We fattened her up. She found a beautiful home, and she went on to have a little foal of her own. But it was quite dramatic. You mentioned, have I learned lessons from my animals? <laughs> I had a pretty serious love affair, you know, in midlife. Really liked this guy. And we broke up more than once. But this one time, it was rough. <laughs> and I went out into the into the stall and I got down on my knees and I put my arms around little Adobe and she's the gentlest thing but all of a sudden she would have nothing to do with it she just flung me off and I kind of went down on the stall floor right near her manure and I was shocked for a moment and then I just started laughing I thought get over yourself and you know it was such a lesson <laughs> I was not to be fawning and crying over this guy, you know. That's what she told me. Get up and get on with life. Which I did almost immediately. I just loved that. That was one of my favorite exchanges with her, even though it was harsh. It was tough love. But yeah, that, that was quite a lesson. And then my latest is another mini horse. He was an old boy. Not at all what you might call pretty if he were in a horse show for confirmation and whatnot, he would not win. Um, and most mini horses have these little dish faces that kind of go like this. And he looks like a little moose. He has this big Roman mm -hmm. nose. And he needed a new home and a blizzard, just after a blizzard. And um, his owners couldn't care for him anymore, health problems and whatnot. And I didn't want him. And I didn't want him. I didn't want him. And I thought, oh, what am I going to do? I have the stall. At this point, my little black mare who was my first Clementine's little friend, was alone because Adobe also died. And uh, so I prayed about it, which I do sometimes. I said, Lord, if you want me to take this horse, you've got to give me peace about it because I have no peace about this. And it was odd. A couple of days went on, and then a Wednesday morning I woke up with peace. It was just an amazing thing. And that peace lasted long enough to bring him home. <laughs> and then, oh, it was crazy. Oh, my goodness. He and my little mare sparred. I have to, had to keep them separate at first. And they still, a whole different dynamic. My other ones were mares. Mm -hmm. And now I have a male and a female. And I never noticed much difference when my mares were in heat. But now I do. And he's all over her. And they bite and they kick. And both of them have bald spots. Except they're also friends. But it's a different dynamic, definitely. It is you mostly taking care of these horses and cleaning their hooves and, and in the winter time. And, oh, brutal. And, and, right. There are times I, like, 
<laughs> what would life be like without them, really? In fact, I really thought, before bringing him home, I really thought about maybe it's time to find a good home for the other one. Because I'm getting older and it's not easy. But it seemed like the right thing to do at the time. And it took a while for all my effort. Also, he, he had a bad case of rain rot, which are little, it's kind of a bacterium that acts like a fungus under the skin. So I had to give him povidone, surgical scrub baths, and he was a whole lot of work. And then last winter, when we had snow like this, you know, and a new foot, sub-zero, it was awful, awful, awful. But um, I've become very protective of him now, and I've realized I've really come to love this boy. But he wanted nothing to do with me. He didn't want to be petted, nothing like that. You couldn't get near him, really. He just moved. Although he was gentle, and then he, he, he was very vocal, and he... <laughs> My mare has this low little... <laughs> and he goes... <laughs> He's this big, tough, masculine guy, and he's got this funny little voice. But he talks a lot. Whenever I drive up, <laughs> that shrill little whinny, early in the morning, at night, if he wants something. And um, we'll usually you usually give it place. to him, too, don't you? Well, yes, I try. You do. And like this morning, I went and brushed, brushed him out, and he stood for it. He liked it, in fact, because they've got thick, matted old coats now from winter, and they, they get itchy. And so he's, he's coming around. He's very good. He lifts his hoofs now. Now, he would lift his, lift his hooves before, so somebody had taken care of his hooves. He was used to it, but, um, yeah, they're a whole lot of work. But he started quitting lately, which is, um, old horses often do this. You find little clumps of matted hay that they spit out like a little cud, and that can mean a couple of things. Um, it means either their teeth need to be floated or filed down because they get sharp points. Mm -hmm. Or because they're old, they've been filed down, they're flat, there's not much to grind up the hay. It's a sign of old age, and sometimes you have to put them on mash and everything. But I realized, oh, I, I kind of panicked, I went online. I'm already feeding him senior feed and some other mushy things and beet pulp that I soak, a lot of work. And um, I thought how protective I felt. Oh no, now he's got this problem. <laughs> mm. I've got to make him mash and everything. Mm. But rather than for change, I wasn't worried about the work. I was worried about him. I went, oh, see, I fall in love with this funny old boy. I have rarely seen folks take as good care of their animals as you. You may have your doubts. I have my doubts. You my may goodness. have your doubts. You know, I don't brush them nearly as much as I should. I don't clean their hooves as often as I should, although their hooves are healthy and they do have a good farrier. But um, you are you. alert to their needs. Thank you, Maggie. And now see this little guy. He's just so sweet. Look at him. He's missing a few teeth. He's got, this is a fatty lipoma that we had biopsied years ago when it was little. And the vet said, no, leave it alone unless it gets so large it impairs his breathing. He's got, he's got them all over him. He's got more here. He's got a scar down here where he had a mast cell tumor removed. Serious surgery because that can turn cancerous right. and pretty quickly. So, um, and Italian greyhounds and Chinese cresteds, or a cross between the two, often end up being the winner of the ugliest dog in the world awards in California, the annual one, and people love them. But they're known for having their teeth loosen up rather early, and then their tongue hangs out where the teeth are gone, <laughs> and um, they develop bumps and things. Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful, yeah. <laughs> elegant animal suddenly mm -hmm. becomes kind of a caricature and maybe in some people's eyes ugly. <laughs> and they're good friends? They are. But Solomon just looked at Solomon you. Solomon can drive Packard crazy. First of all, Solomon adores Packard and will groom him when they're up on the bed and I'm watching television, which is right there. Um, he will groom him, lap his ears, lap his face, clean him all up. Packard will just revel in it, and he will not return the favor at all. He has never tried to groom Solomon, but um, and then they get along very well. Sometimes, also, he gets very excited, as I do, too. So, as <laughs> Caesar Milan says, you may not get the dog you want, but you do get the dog you need. So, I think that's interesting. But, uh, yeah, th this guy gets out of control. Like, if there's a little chipmunk or something he notices, he'll bark and he'll start spinning. If I throw something, Packard loves to chase things. He'll kind of jump around and he, he won't be certain what to do. He won't know what to do. And sometimes he'll start barking too much and then Packard doesn't like him and go, Arf! and once in a while they get into a little spar, but 
Yeah, they're, they're pretty good friends, except sometimes Packard just wants to be left alone. How old are they now? Packard is 11. Actually, Packard's 11, was 11 in February. He'll be 11 in September. Thanks, Penny. Hi, I'm Maggie Davis. I make videos and podcasts on behalf of Animals in Need. Maggie, S as in Sam Davis at gmail.com. 207-266-7673. Recordings are made in person and long distance, in depth or on the spot. If you are an animal rescuer, foster, or adopter who is home to or has been home to animals formerly in need, be part of it, as private or as public as you want to be. The Open Wide the Door Smartphone Conversation Project. Your story matters.